So you want to know how to get more likes on Instagram. Today I'm sharing the top five up-to-date tips for getting more Instagram likes and engagement in 2022. What worked last year may not work this year, so you're going to want to watch to the end of the video. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Brandy with Life Marketing, the digital marketing agency with a mission to help small businesses grow. Before we get started, please go ahead and like this video for me, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of the business growing videos that we put out every single week. All right, so jumping straight in with tip number one, ask for engagement indirectly. One of the simplest quick fixes to getting more likes on your Instagram post is to tell your audience to like it, but you don't want to put it that bluntly. On Facebook, your post will specifically get lower reach if you ask people to like the post because it comes off as spammy. So Facebook will intentionally lower your reach and therefore engagement if you do this. And since Facebook owns Instagram, I'd imagine similar measures are being taken on Instagram. So the trick here is in how you ask for the like. The most popular verbiage is to say double tap instead of like because that's the physical action someone takes on their phone when they like an Instagram pic. But more than just saying double tap, you want to give them a reason to. For instance, you could say double tap if you agree, if you feel the same way, if this has ever happened to you, if you want to see more content like this, etc. Also, I know in this video we're specifically talking about likes, but you can extend this method to get other engagement as well. Like drop the apple emoji in the comments if you liked this post. Tag a friend who can relate, etc. All right, tip number two is to know what your audience likes. You don't want to ask for likes in every single post you make. So it's helpful to create content your audience just inherently likes to begin with. So how do you do this? You start with a deep dive into your customer avatar, also known as a buyer persona, something I introduce you to at the 114 mark in this video and talk more in depth about in this video. So I will link both of those in the description for you to check out. But essentially, you want to know what motivates your audience. Are they looking for a solution to a problem they have or are they looking for a way to achieve a goal they have? How does your product or service fit into that picture? These are the things you'll want to consider when planning out your content calendar. Another useful tool to look at in this area is your Instagram analytics. What type of posts have gotten you the most likes thus far? You can go into insights and tap on the content you shared and change the filter to be by likes and then set the time period you want to view, be it a year, 30 days, etc. When you filter to view your top posts this way, you can usually spot a pattern here to see what it is about those posts that people are responding to. Start with that and then build from there. Then tip number three is to A-B split test different posting styles to see what works. If what you've been doing isn't working, then you've got to try something else. But make sure you test things in a way so that you know which change is making the difference. For example, let's say you only ever post single image Instagram posts with long captions. If you start posting carousel posts with short captions and get a lot of likes from that, you won't know which change is making the difference. Is it the shorter captions or the multimedia? That's the gist when it comes to the purpose behind a planned AB split test. So here's a list of things you can test out to shake things up. First up is content type, like single images versus carousel posts versus video versus reels versus guides, etc. And if you need further explanation on what any of these content types are, watch this video next. Next up is captions, short versus long, funny tone versus casual versus professional, emojis versus no emojis, etc. Next, you can test hashtags, all 30 versus less than 30, testing different niches and testing small in size versus large in size. And lastly, media, using stock videos and photos versus using your own videos and photos, showing your face versus not showing your face, etc. So figure out what your audience does like to see from you and build on that to continue creating content that they will likely like. All right, now before we get into my last two tips, here is a quick message from one of our co-founders, Sherman. Hey, we just helped a small business make over $1.5 million through Facebook advertising. And after managing millions of dollars in ad spend for thousands of different small businesses, we have decided to give away everything we learned to you in a special program. If you wanna learn the blueprint to success, the best practices from some of the fastest growing companies in the world, and all of the different tools you will need, then sign up for our social ads training program today. 
All right, tip number four is to content stack. Content stacking is when you take a post on Instagram and share it to other places, be it on or off Instagram. Ideally, you'll want to share everywhere that you have an audience. The first place you can start with is sharing your post to your Instagram story. The way the algorithm is, your audience may not see your post organically in your feed at first. So one way to help make sure your Instagram followers don't miss it is to share it to your story. From there, you can share it to your Facebook page, your Twitter, your LinkedIn, your email list, or wherever else that you have a sizable audience. Give them the CTA or call to action to check out your post and like and comment so that you're maximizing all of your followers, not just your Instagram followers. And then lastly, tip number five is to optimize your posts. Post optimization will consist of a few things, so let's break it down. The first thing is to add any location tags, photo tags, and hashtags that are relevant and applicable. This will help extend your reach, which usually helps to get more likes so long as the reach you're getting is qualified. Hence why I said all your tags should be relevant and applicable. You don't want to get reach for the sake of getting reach. You want to put your post in front of a targeted audience. For example, let's say you sell chessboards, but you use location and photo tags and hashtags that aren't necessarily related to chess. You just pick tags that get a lot of reach. Well, then you get people who have no interest in chess looking at your picture, so they just scroll on past it with no interaction. This not only fails to help you, but it actually hurts you. Instagram will notice that people are seeing your post and moving on without liking it, and Instagram will think, well, I guess this is not a good post then. Better kill the reach on it, and that's exactly what will happen. The next thing you can do to optimize your post is make sure relevant keywords are included in the caption. If you missed some of my Instagram updates video from the last year, you might have missed the news that Instagram is becoming more like like a search engine. In fact, you should go ahead and subscribe now so that doesn't happen again in the future. But what that means is that users can search a keyword in the Instagram search bar and find posts and accounts that have that keyword in their content, even if it's not listed as a hashtag or location in the post. So you'll want to make sure your caption includes relevant, high intent keywords. The third thing you can do to optimize is make sure you're posting when your audience is online. Go to your insights, tap total followers, adjust the time period to the last 30 days, and scroll down to the bottom to see the most active times. This will show you the most active hour your users are online each day of the week, or if you toggle to days, you can see which days they're most active. The reason this tool has become relevant again is because Instagram is bringing the old chronological algorithm back as an option users can choose to opt into or not. So for users who view posts in their feed chronologically, knowing what time those users are online will play a big part in getting more Instagram likes. And then the last thing you can do to optimize your Instagram posts is to reply with speed and a plan. What do I mean by that? Well, when you receive comments, you first of all want to make sure you're replying back in a timely manner. And second of all, reply back with a question. This will encourage the person who commented to comment again. Now, you may be thinking, what does this have to do with Instagram likes? But the more engagement your post gets in general, the more likely the algorithm is to serve your post to more people which leads to likes. So that wraps up my five tips for more Instagram likes in 2022. Leave a comment if you have questions about anything. Otherwise, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell before you go. And I will see you in the next episode.